let's say we wanted to find the average value of this function over the interval from a to b. Uh, and that's a pretty interest, interesting question. Normally we think of averages when we have some set of data. So we have all these data points, maybe numbers d1 plus d2. Maybe these are all test scores. You want to find the average test score for a class. d4, dot, 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 up to at, n is just the number that it ends at. So it could be 100. It could be, you know, maybe there's 30 kids in your class. So let's say n is 30. And then you divide by that number. However many there are, you divide by it. And this is the average. Okay, we all know that. That's easy enough. But what's the average value of a function when this function, it, it, it has an infinite amount of these points, right? These data points or, or an infinite amount of values. Um, so how can we find the average value of a function? Well, it's going to be a very similar process to, to what we did to find the area under, the, under this curve. But we won't have to go through all the, the laborious details. So to give you some idea, one way that we might estimate the average is to just pick a, pick a few points. Let's say we picked, uh, I don't know how many points are there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's say we picked those eight points. Well, then we would have, we could write this as a sum. Why not? The sum as i goes from one to eight of the value of the function at, at that particular x value, whatever it was that we picked. So this would be x, uh, well, the, the first one would be x0 because we picked that as a, then x1, x2, so on and so on, up to 8. And then uh, we would divide this, we would multiply by 1 over n. Or in other words, we would divide by n. That's, that would be our average. And this 1 over n, or sorry, that would be 1 over 8. There's 8 data points, or 8 values. So this 1 over 8 could be inside or outside of the, uh, of the sum. It doesn't really matter. Um, and another way to see that, even though it's a very small point, is if you have p1 plus p2 over 8, this is the same thing as p1 over 8 plus p2 over 8, of course. So in other words, we could multiply this 8 to each term individually, or we could pull it outside and multiply all of the sum together together by 1 over 8, or I should say divide the sum by 1 over 8. Anyways, okay, you got that. So instead of picking these 8 points, let's do what we did when we were estimating, or when we were, when we were finding area under curve, and let's not put a number on this, let's just call it n. And eventually, of course, we're going to take a limit later. Okay, that's great. This will give us the average value of the function estimated by n number of points. And now we're going to do something a little bit interesting. We're going to multiply and divide by the length of the interval. So b minus a over b minus a. And b minus a, that's just a number. So we can, and, and it, when you multiply and divide, it's 1. So we can definitely do that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to um, rewrite this so that it's convenient for us, something that we recognize. So the sum uh, as i goes from 1 to n of b minus a over n. Now why is that useful? That's useful because this is what we used to think of as the width of a rectangle. right? We said the width of the interval, so that's b minus a, divided by the number of rectangles. Uh, and here these were just points, but you know now they've become rectangles because we're multiplying by this, what we used to consider a width. So this used to be a width when we were doing Riemann sums to find area. And that's what it is, still is. It's the, it's the length of the interval divided by the number of rectangles. Okay, so we've gotten to width. And then what happened to this b minus a on the bottom? Well, let's just pull this outside, 1 over b minus a. And b minus a is just a constant, and so we, we are allowed to do that. So what we're left with is 1 over b minus a. Uh, times the sum as i goes from 1 to n of f of x times by the width delta x. I don't need to use a delta x sub i because these widths are this or the that width is a constant. Uh, b minus a over n is a constant. Um, as what when you fix n, this is a constant. Um, 
don't worry too much about that. So anyways, we're going to take a limit like we've done in the past. 1 over b minus a is definitely a constant, so we can pull it outside the limit. So we'll take the limit as n goes to infinity. And remember, we're assuming that the width of, of each uh, rectangle is going to 0. And in fact, we don't even have to assume it. You could see, based on our formula for the width of the rectangle, as n goes to infinity, this width certainly goes to 0. Okay. So this is the limit of the sum that we have above. I'm just going to write that because you, you can read it right from above. Same thing. And we already know that the limit of that sum turns into a definite integral. By definition, that is what the definite integral is. So this is the integral from a to b of uh, f of x dx. So 1 over b minus a times that integral is the average value of this function. I don't know, it's kind of cool. Um, let's look at an example now, now that you can see where it comes from. So I'll leave this on screen. This is the formula for average value, but it's probably more important to know where it comes from. So find the average, let's find the average value um, of the function f of x equals 3x minus, uh, let's do 3x squared minus 2x. Keep it kind of easy. Find the average value over the interval from 1 to 4. Okay, well this tells us the average value. Um, the interval is just what a and b are. So we have 1 over 4 minus 1 times the integral as x goes from 1 to 4 of 3x squared minus 2x. So that's, uh, it's not too bad. We have our little formula up there that we just derived. And let's go ahead and solve this. So this is equal to 1 third times the antiderivative of this is going to be um, uh, 3, uh, sorry, x cubed minus x squared as x goes from 1 to 4, so it's important to remember to put those limits on. Um, and I'm going to move over here so I have more room. So this is 1 third times, um, let's see here, we have 4 cubed, 4 cubed minus 4 squared minus 1 cubed minus 1 squared, 1 squared. So just to be clear, this is what happened when we plugged in 4. We subtracted what happened when we plugged in 1 into our antiderivative that we found. Um, we still have the 1 third out front multiplying. Okay, so let me clean, clean that up. And now we just evaluate. So what is 4 cubed? Uh, that's 4 times 16, which is 64. 64 minus 16. Minus, well, 1 cubed minus 1, that's just 0. So minus 0, so we don't even need to write that. 64 minus 16, that looks like 48. So this is equal to, I shouldn't be writing these equal signs. So this is equal to 48 over 3. Uh, and let's see, that's 16, right? Okay, so the average value of this function, 3x squared minus 2x, on this interval, the average value is 16. So that's kind of interesting. We have an average value problem now. Okay, see you in the next video.